Hey there, if you have been following along with my videos, you will have seen a scouring and two mordant theme videos. Those are preparations for natural dyeing and you'll want to watch those before diving into this video to prepare your fibers. I will be test dyeing with four different materials that dye brown. I have pine cones, these are from a pine tree. Some of these are wet and some of these are dry. Walnut shells, like these guys yellow onion skins, and coffee grounds. Another material you can dye with to create a variety of browns are acorns. This is acorn dyed on cotton fabric. This is acorn, this is a light acorn on wool and a slightly different color with the acorn on wool as well. And then this dark yarn, I did acorn with an iron water wash over top to create this dark color. The two react to darken the color into this almost gray black color. And you can see here I have some samples of different fabrics and how they dye with this co these colors. So the pine cones, you're probably always going to get a deeper color on wool than you will on cellulose fibers, so cotton, linen, hemp, other plant fibers. Silk sometimes dyes a bit darker. This is a silk sample. This one ended up pretty light. So I have some wool yarn here, a swatch of silk, a swatch of wool fabric, some linen fabric, and a piece of muslin or cotton muslin. So that's what the pine cones can do. For the walnut, this is a light walnut because I soaked it for about four hours, so it's a little bit lighter than you can achieve with walnut. This is a swatch of wool fabric, swatch of silk fabric, this is linen, and this is cotton muslin. And here is some wool yarn from the walnut. You get a nice deep, deep brown from that on the wool. Here is wool yarn dyed with yellow onion skins. It's a variegated color, kind of an orangey brown. And then coffee ends up doing a variety of different colors depending on what amount of coffee you use or what type of coffee it is, if it's a dark roast or whatnot. So this is just like a deep chocolate brown. The colors that you produce from natural dyes will always be slightly different depending on how much dye material you have, how much you mordanted or scoured your fibers, the time of year that you harvested what you're dyeing with, the amount of pigment that is in the natural material. So depending on when you harvested things, it will have more or less pigment. If you're going to dye for a project, dye all of the fiber at the same time so you get somewhat of the same tone throughout your fibers because you may not ever be able to produce the same type of color. So to process each of these items for natural dyeing, you're going to need pots. I suggest using pots that you only use for dyeing projects. It can be a little bit touchy transferring between kitchen use and natural dyeing use, especially using fibers that have been mordanted with alum or other metal salts. So for the pine cones, you can either crush them up with a hammer so that they're broken up into smaller pieces or just throw them into your pot. I'll just pour my bag into this pot. And then the walnut shells, break them up into pieces and put in a couple handfuls. I will be dyeing swatches here, so I'm only going to do a small amount. You'll want to multiply the amount of dye material you're extracting the dye from, depending on how much material you will be dyeing. And that is a lot of experimentation to see how much depth of color you want from your items. So I'll stop there with the walnut skins, pour in all my onion skins. You want quite a few onion skins. I'm working with a small amount. And I also have a batch of previously processed onion dye that I'll add to it to refresh the bath and add these skins as well. And then to each of these pots of dye stuff, you will add water enough to cover the material with about an inch over top, if your pot has enough room. 
Now you'll place each of these pots on a heat source, allow the pigment to extract from the dye stuff for two to six hours, depending on what you're doing. I like to keep them at between low and medium heat so that they're not cook I'm not cooking my dye or just evaporating the water off of the dye, but it's slowly extracting the color from the dye material. So for the pine cones, I would suggest about four hours on a medium heat on the stove. Have a top vent fan going or do this outside. For the walnuts, the same thing, about four hours on a stove with a vent and at medium heat. For yellow onions, I keep at kind of a medium low heat for two to six hours and end up with a fairly decent pigment depth. And then for the coffee, you can go as little as 30 minutes to extract as much dye as possible. If you like natural dye and like this video because it'll help me make more natural dye videos. Put the pot of dye on a heat source and turn it on. Work in a well-ventilated area outside or with windows open, fans, and an exhaust fan. Allow to slowly heat over several hours. Add water to the dye bath if the water level starts getting low. Stir every half hour or so to check the dye color. You will begin to see it darken as pigment is extracted. Knowing when to strain out the dye material takes practice. Typically, if the water begins to look colorful, it has pigment that will dye fiber. The darker or deeper the color, the better. Strain out the dye material and the dye liquid into a bowl. Clean out the pot and then transfer the dye back to the pot. Add more water to your dye bath if you need it to cover your fibers. Place back on the heat source and set the temperature to what you want for dyeing fiber. Typically, I set this at a medium heat. Add your fibers and submerge into the dye. Premordanted fibers that have been dried will take a few minutes to absorb the water and become wet. If you want an even result from your dye bath, you want to pre-wet your fiber so that it's completely wet when you put it in your pot. Allow your fibers to soak in the dye for two to six hours, depending on what dye material you are using, and stir about every 15 minutes to make sure that the dye transfers evenly on the fabric or fibers. Allow the fibers to steep in the dye until the fabric looks several shades darker than what you want as it fades with rinsing and drying, or until the fibers seem to have stopped absorbing pigment. You'll begin to see it darken as it sits in the dye bath. When you're ready to rinse your fibers, I suggest transferring your fibers to a bowl and then running cool water over your swatches or fabric fiber, whatever it is you dyed, until the water runs clear. So here I am rinsing them off in multiple baths of fresh clean water and then squeezing out excess dye and excess water and then setting aside my swatches as soon as I've squeezed out any excess dye. So this is one of the times that the color begins to fade as you rinse out any excess dye that's on the fabric. And then the next step is to lay them out flat to dry in a well-ventilated area. And that's another time while they'll begin to fade with the air drying. Here are the results of the walnut dye on wool, silk, cotton, and linen. The pine cones on wool yarn, wool fabric, cotton, silk, and linen. And then the coffee on wool, cotton, silk, and linen. And this was a big surprise. The yellow onion skins dyed the fabrics a bright yellow this round. Like this video if you enjoyed the natural dyeing and want to see more natural dyeing from me. Subscribe and hit the bell to get notified every time I put out a new video. And check the links in the description below for lots of resources. And to sign up for my email update list, I send out a twice a month email with lots of resources, tutorials, and inspiration. I'd love to have you join the Textile Indie community by doing that. I would love to stay in touch with you. Thanks so much for watching and happy natural dyeing. I'll see you next time.